All right. So the game itself obviously didn't go the best. You know, they lost 33 to 6. However, we're still going to go through this just as things because I don't really think it really matters what they lose or win by in a preseason game. It's like they could have won 33 to 6 and I don't think I'd be like too, you know, jazzed up about it. But offensively, Dozier still is horrible. I know, shocker. But um, I do think Mond actually played a lot better than his numbers actually suggested. There were a lot of tight window throws, and he kind of sidesteps some pressure, and he was able to run. There was obviously some clock mismanagement at the end of uh, that first half there. But either uh, Clint, the new coordinator, needed to call a timeout, or he needed to call a timeout, or at least spike the ball or something, because there was like 20 seconds that ran off. And it just, it resulted in them kicking, I think, it, what was it, a 25-yard field goal after some not-so-great throws. But for the most part, I think Mond played better than those numbers did show. There were some drops, tight window throws. Um, there were some throwaways. And considering that the receivers weren't really available for him, because, I mean, K.J. Osborne kind of came into this game as the de facto number one receiver on the roster when you count for there's no Thielen, no Jefferson, Chad Beebe's also out, and then Ola B.C. Johnson tears ACL. There's not much going in here. It's basically Amir Smith-Marset, K.J. Osborne, um, Myron Mitchell, undrafted rookie from UAB, Wap Filer, undrafted rookie from Indiana, then... That's kind of it for the most part. So, I do think he had some rust, clearly. Um, I don't know how much of that is because he missed practice days due to the positive COVID test, but that's whatever. I think Davis, uh, the right guard, had a solid, probably not great day, but still much better than Dakota Dozier, so I feel much better about the right guard spot. Even though we didn't get to see Udo today, which I think is a good sign that he basically is running away with this right guard spot. So if it's better than what Davis did today, it's a fair assumption <laughs> to think the interior of this offensive line is going to be much, much better. Now, as opposed to, well, as to the actual offense and what we can maybe take away, I did see a lot more jet sweep action and a lot more orbit kind of motions pre-snap. They didn't really take advantage of those things last year. So it's good to see that they might actually be trending into that modern direction. Defensively, um, there's not much here. Um, I thought some of the young guys flashed a bit. Um, Chaz Surratt flashed a little bit in the kind of towards the middle of that uh, third quarter, I think it was. Um, Patrick Jones, I thought, did a lot better than some of the other guys. I think he's the one that I kind of came away thinking I'm the most excited for out of the defensive rookies. Um, I thought Janarius Robinson had some pretty good reps as well, but he kind of over-pursued on some other things. Wasn't quite as disruptive as Patrick Jones was, but he was still kind of in there. Um, and I'm pretty sure on that one play to K.J. Hamler, you know, the deep ball, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he expected safety help, and I'm Pretty sure it was Josh Metellus. Pretty sure. I'm just working off of a memory bank there. Not entirely confident it was him. But there was a safety there, and he just kind of took the middle of the field. I'm pretty sure Dantzler probably assumed he was going to take the high end there. He did not. And so that leads to 80-yard touchdowns. And I don't think uh, James Lynch actually looked terrible at nose tackle, of all things. So, that was interesting. Uh, but that's kind of it for the defense. <laughs> there wasn't much good overall there. I thought the linebackers, for the most part, were pretty lackluster. They left a lot to be desired. There was no Nick Vigil in this game either. So, I'm assuming that means he's basically taking that third linebacker spot after Barr and Kendricks. And then, special teams. Good job to Joseph making all those kicks. Um, everyone else, mm. there's some talks that need to be had. So, I think Britton Colquitt maybe had one or two good punts out of the four he had, 
and I think he could potentially go. <laughs> um, overall, just special teams coverage looked pretty sloppy. Um, obviously, they had a long return, and you know there was I don't think on punt coverage that uh, Cole quits punting was really helping them out, so it's a little harder to judge that. But there was still some. <coughs> Excuse me. But there were still some problems there. Um, but just as a team overall here, they rested 31 guys today. And they looked like a roster that was missing half of a team. So that kind of checked out. Now, I do think it's way too early to hit the panic button. I've already seen some people in the social media realms kind of hit the button. I'm like, calm down. This wasn't even... We didn't see one single player that's going to start for this team in Cincinnati today. So maybe it's really not that big of a deal to freak out about this just yet. Um, and I think there's actually a potential positive light to this in the sense that the rookies really aren't that bad. As of right now, it doesn't appear to be that way. Because I know there were some slight freaking out of people that basically were like, why can't the rookies climb the depth chart? Well, I don't think that's necessarily the issue. Sometimes with how this team is ran, they like to give the veterans every chance they have. And after today, I don't see how you can say there's any way that isn't what's happening. When you look at the, you know, just very specifically Dozier versus Wyatt Davis, there's no way Dozier is actually better than Wyatt Davis. And... I actually think that was proven today, but um, even with some of the other things, I kind of thought Janarius Robinson and Patrick Jones flashed a bit more than Wanham or Weatherly. Now, I'm not entirely sure if they're working up against different linemen they could have been, so maybe taper on that a little bit, but they just don't appear to be as bad as some of the reports I've seen say they are. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribing, super helpful. And until next time, I bid you all adieu.